We are, but like always, if I have to edit it, I will, but I probably won't because I like to leave this kind of shit in. So Yeah, we, we don't edit anything. Um, so, Spooky Dust Podcast, right? Yep. This um, is nice. <laughs> I was just checking. <laughs> um, but, okay, so this is the situation. We were going to have Mickey Knuckles on. Yep. And as a surprise, I was going to bring Randy West in so they could talk about a couple different matches that they've had together. Randy showed up uh, at the time of the podcast, uh, and then I got a message from Mickey on Facebook that said that she's having technical issues and she's trying to work through it. Um, Mickey and I did the test earlier in the day, and everything was fine. It, I mean, it, it was going smooth. You know what I mean? Five-minute combo, and, and that was it. Said, so see you at seven. You know, yep. so Randy shows up, um, we're just kind of shooting the shit and talking and Randy said she didn't have anything else to do. So she was just going to kind of sit back and, and watch it. And then when we, you know, announced, Hey, we got a surprise for you, Mickey, then Randy was going to pop in and, uh, uh it, it, it had the makings of a really great surprise, a double guest episode first time for us. Um, when, when we asked Randy to do it, she was like, oh, like she got all excited about it and stuff. And she she was totally into it. Um, so we're we're kind of sitting by and maybe like 10 minutes goes by and then we're in between 10 and 15 minutes and I just hit record. So damn, that's how that played out. I yeah. was trying, oh, okay. that, that's because when we we started talking about stuff and um, it, it just it went all over the place with the conversation just in that 10 minutes. So I just hit record because I had a bad feeling that things might kind of go tits up. You know what I mean? And they didn't really go tits up. They just went all over the place. Right. Yeah. So ultimately we waited for Mickey for what, an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, we were going to, we were going to go two hours in the motherfucker. You know what I mean? Uh, but you know, things happen and uh, yeah, Mickey happened. never showed up. Right. Um, we're still working on getting Mickey. Right. We're not giving up on that. Yes. Um, we've been in communication. Uh, Maybe she gets her phone situated or computer situation and uh, she can come on and maybe we can have the surprise Randy uh, Mickey uh, collaboration. It won't be a surprise now, but we're going to have to swerve her and be like, Randy's not on. And then after Mickey's on for a little bit, just be like, just kidding, running. You know what yeah. I mean? But, you know, this isn't this isn't a back to back Randy episode, right? Randy had Randy on the second episode. Um, this isn't. Uh, getting her on for a second time so soon uh she is an awesome guest and we will be having her back but this was not uh, this wasn't really wrestling talk this was no this was banter with three people on a thursday night um and, and it, the episode is wild it goes everywhere there's some weird stuff that there happens is crazy weird stuff there um, is some, there's some super weird stuff if you're watching this right you, if you're listening you won't get what we're talking about, but if you're watching it, yeah, it, there is some definitely some weird, interesting shit that happens in it. So, uh, okay. special guest, I mean, special special surprise for our viewers on YouTube. Hopefully, we don't get kicked off of YouTube. Um, I man, I th this right here makes me love Randy West even more. And I, you pointed this out before when we were talking about how we were going to do this. That um, so Randy um had she got injured at the horror slam. Yes. Uh, double the oh my death, god, a horror slam death match, uh, murder city death match cup, murder city death match cup. Sorry, I, I went stupid, it's crazy. I went it's, stupid on it's that. It's the but, longest title for attorney, but um, Randy got injured in a crazy spot. Um, and uh, she's doing okay now, yeah. thank god. But yep. so, yeah, um, we recorded this like a week before that happened, um, yeah. So, uh I got I got nothing really much, right? Uh, we wish you know Randy a speedy recovery back. Um, you know we will we will be having her back on, uh, absolutely to to talk about that. Um, and 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 just keep going, right? Keep the keep the good times rolling. Yeah. Um, but I got I got nothing else, right? Enjoy the bizarre uh, hour twenty hour thirty. Yeah. Uh, conversation we have. Um, there's there's some awesome there's some awesome visuals. I, I encourage everyone to kind of go back and. And watch and there, it, there's right? just, I mean, if, if you really want to know what somebody like Randy West is like in 
not in the ring. Th this is right here is a prime example of just, you know, the, the type of awesome person she is. Yeah, the conversation went so far all over the place. I don't even remember what we talked about, so I'm kind of excited to listen to it back to it myself. I, I watched a little bit of it just kind of, you know, um, getting familiar with this. And it, I was when I was watching, I was like, wow, this is so cool, you know? So I, I got to know, right, uh, Randy, um, thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, thank you, back, Randy. Hope to see you back in the ring soon. Um, and uh, this is in progress, so here it is. There's so many light tubes, and she's like, yeah, baby, <laughs> let's do this. I just, I mean, I, I watched it, and I, I was expecting it to just start off bonkers, and then when you guys went outside, I was watching it like this. I was like, I wonder where it's going to go. And then you guys were like fighting on like you know like military like it was a BMW hall you know you know I, the real victim was the PT cruiser I'm just gonna say <laughs> listen, listen her and I have gotten in trouble before for fucking up cars in the parking lot when we wrestled in street fights so this time if you watch the video back you will see us both ask Mike for permission to use his car. Like we both asked for permission to fuck his car up because last time we didn't ask for permission and we got in trouble. I mean, but it, it was so good. And like I said, I, I really wanted to surprise her by having you on um, and you and also you facilitating it because I don't know if she told you this, but um, she like ignored me for like two weeks. <laughs> And then yeah. uh, when I asked you if you would get a hold of her, she she immediately got back to me and was like, Randers said you're good people. Yep. So you gave us the cosign, and that was so huge of you to do that. You know what I mean? Man, I had fun when I was on the show. Well, and you know what? This is a shock for me, too, because Dave didn't tell me you were coming on until like five minutes ago. I was going to surprise. <laughs> I, I was going to surprise everybody, and it was such a big deal. You know, um, so we we had uh, Chuck on last week. Uh -huh. Um and he he kept bringing up you know how how you were like oh she, he was like yeah Randy loves telling that story you know oh um, I do I actually love it so I actually told Chuck that um because I'm I'm gonna start doing some video stuff for Horror Slam mm -hmm. so I told Chuck I was like I I could film a promo for you and you know um you you could because he's fighting you in, in the first round you know. Well, he's he's gonna try and survive me is what's gonna happen. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. You know I wanna see what happened last time. I'm gonna give you some a little background here, Randy. When we talked to Chuck, Dave was like, Can I bring you an electric fly swatter to use in your match? And Chuck was like, Yeah, this was before the match even got announced between you two. So after it got announced, I messaged him and then I messaged Chuck and I was like, You gotta bring two fly swatters now. Cause <laughs> <laughs> just bring I don't need no fancy electrified nothing just bring me a brick <laughs> I'll make it just as dope as that electrified <laughs> no, I, was gonna, I was gonna apologize to you and say I'm Randy I'm so sorry because I brought it up as a joke and, and he was like oh fuck yeah bring it I'll use it now and, and Francis started laughing and I was like man I don't want to do that to Randy god damn it like oh, you're not so doing bad. it to me you're doing it to him <laughs> Yeah, you just got to get it out of his fucking hands. That's all. You know what I mean? It, it, it's never going to It's gonna be in his hands to come to the ring. And then he's fucked. <laughs> I'm just so I'm just so bummed out that like that's a first round matchup because I would like I would love to see both of you make it to like a second round. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like I was going to give you guys the spoiler tonight with, with Mickles. No, 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 no spoiler. Please. I was going to give you the spoiler that it's. Me and her in the finals. Good luck, everybody else. I hate it. Thanks for coming out. But when you got when you got the tough broad and the fucking walking episode of cops on the show, you know we're gonna be the last two fucking bitches standing in that motherfucker. That would be an ultimate end to that night. To the second Sorry, that everybody would be... else. I'm gonna fucking lose my mind over something <laughs> like that. God damn. It's so, a stack hey, card. So. Hey, Fran, give me one second. I'm going to try and message her again on Facebook and see what happens. Because I don't want to. That's a Garen fucking T. Bam. Damn, <laughs> but yeah, no, Dave, uh, when I was getting, Randy, when we were getting ready for the show, um, I, I do like, sh I do a lot of the show prep. So a lot of the notes and just kind of produce where the show goes. Um, and we were talking, <laughs> he was like, don't mention the, the, the RPW Typhoon and Tubes to like eight. And I'm like, okay, you know, why? And he was like, just, just don't, just don't. And I was like, okay. So I moved it down 
on our list. <laughs> and I was like, I don't fucking get it. And then like, uh, just like I said, like five minutes before you hopped on, I was like, hey, we're getting really close to the eight o'clock time. Um, if she gets on, should we just start talking about that? And he like squirmed in his chair and he was like, I don't want to tell you. Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> Can't keep a secret for shit. <laughs> Yo, I'm like a 13 year old girl. <sighs> Randy, I mean, I, I think I might have said this last time, but like as far as like the, the Mount Rushmore of like modern death match, it's Mickey and it's you. And I would say probably Sadika. And I I really want Sage Supreme Sage Sin Supreme to be on there. But I think that it it would probably be uh, Casey Kirk at the moment. I, I see, like I have trouble putting myself on there just because I know Lufisto is floating around in the world. Yeah. No, I, I I absolutely agree. I I absolutely agree. But I, as far as like right now, and maybe this is just my opinion, but like I said, in having present two, day, yeah, having present day two of, of the the four. Mount Rushmore of women's death match is like so huge to me. You know what I mean? Not trying to butter you up, but I mean, Mickles, Mickles couldn't even make it to the Mickles and Randers and tonight. I, I just messaged her again and I'm sorry. And we're, we're working on, uh, we, we've talked about uh, having Sadako on, but Dave doesn't speak or, or understand Spanish. So yeah, that it, would be it would just be, it would just be us shit talking Dave essentially, probably. Um, <laughs> Um, and Dave knows how I feel about like Ludark, so that'll just be me just so gushing. Over her. <laughs> I, I, I love Ludark. You know what <laughs> I mean? That means looking at smiling. That's all I know. I don't know very much. Uh, hey, dude, I I have to do tech support with with Mickey real quick. Give me one second. Oh, Dave. And, and, tech support. And Dave's the jack of all trades. He he. I got. I get it off easy. Like I just have to like spend my days googling, adding stuff to his show notes, and he's. Got to be Geek Squad. Um, Hello, thank you for calling customer service. This is Dave. How may I help you? That's pretty much how it is every time I call him. <laughs> as soon as he said tech support, all I can think of was the South Park episode. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've been to Dave's house. His whole setup in, his, in that corner he's in right now is like hard drives and like cables and fucking the keyboard that lights up. He bought his oh, yeah. keyboard and I was like, wow, that's, that lights up a bunch of colors. I'm going to give you the smallest little insight to I understand. All right. See, Dave. Good. There you go. Is that, that's uh, that's Schwartzy setup, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you that's guys, also yeah. my living room. <laughs> oh, shit, really? Yeah. We have a, like, our living room and our dining room are all, like, one big, long fucking room. So we cut it off, like, a quarter of the room is actually a living room area, and the rest of it is our studio. Wow. My husband had a dream. He wants to talk shit to people and smoke weed online every morning. That's, but I think. I'm, I'm going to make that happen. That's Dave's dream also. I'm make so close happen. to it, too. <laughs> like, he's got a, his his Twitch stream and all that now, so. That is. That I, did, is... Uh, I, I co-hosted, or, um. I stepped in because he couldn't make it yesterday. He was out uh, for a gut check. So I stepped in and did hosting yesterday. Me and Vinny Ratlock. Living the dream. When you say gut check, did, are you referring to the impact gut check? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, um, it was um, Schwartzy, uh, Sean Tyler, um, Dread King Logan, Zach Thomas. Uh, who else was down there from our little friend. group? You know who Sean Tyler is, right? Yeah. Okay, but that's the guy. That, Sean Tyler used to be my boss at a job. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Small world, right? I'm this, sorry. Shen, this... Shen Tai used to be uh, Schwartz's tag partner, too. Oh, really? Okay. And they were the, um, uh, what were they called? But they were, they were Jewish people. But he was Sean Tyler Steen. That's a kosher a, club. They tagged us kosher club. Kosher club? That's so awesome. Yeah, you didn't know your kosher. your old boss is that great, do you? He's it was the Hebrew that great. The Sean Hebrew Tyler was a dick to me, okay? <laughs> and Sean Tyler Steen. And they also had Dickie Bronsonfeld. Um, 
who else? There was another one that was in the group that they just added like a Berg to or something and gave, gave him the, the Jewish name so that he could fit into the group. <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> yeah, they were all there. Uh, they all went down and, and did their thing. And, you know, Jason Hotch and fucking Jack Price <laughs> took away the victory. The Schwartz, the, the, the Hebrew hammer. <laughs> yeah, yep. He was, so there's actually it surfaces like once or twice a year. There's a video of uh, Hebrew Hammer versus Greg Excellent uh, from CZW. If you go back and watch that, it's one of those videos when it came out. Everybody's like, "Oh, you guys are killing the fucking business. You guys are a bunch of assholes. This, that, and the other." And I said, "But now when they share, it, they're like, look at this fucking thing. It's hilarious. This is comedy gold." I just, oh, man. So, Randy, I, I, um, I, I was going to ask this earlier. So, you, you and, not to get all personal, you and Schwartz are married? Yes. I, I did not yes. know that. Yeah, we've been together uh, 10 years. Wow. Fucking congrats. Holy crap. Yeah. Married in, uh, we got married at Bongathon in Colorado in 2019. <laughs> so we've been together since, like, 2012. That's awesome. That's awesome. We well, were married by me up. Right? So it was awesome. Well, you know, so I actually saw that Schwartz used to do some deathmatch stuff. Yeah, yeah. He um, so he's been trying to um take some time off of the death matches just because he has been trying to be considered more for uh the AWs, the Ring of Honors, the Impacts, the you know the the shit like that. So understood. You know, they don't necessarily want to see you bleeding all over the place. They want to see your character work and your gimmick and how you wrestle and how you move in the ring. So if he's doing death matches, he's all cut up and hurt. How the fuck does he show them that? You know? So his character work is phenomenal. Like in RPW, he cracks me up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's not. So everybody's like, Oh, that's just his character. It shows. No, 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 no. I'm here <laughs> to tell you at least, at least probably, I don't know, an hour or two of every day after the show is over, not even when he has to do it for a show. I have to deal with Schwartz. <laughs> well, there's, my um, husband, there's my husband, fucking Joseph, and then there's fucking Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so I just got something from Mickey. She said that Pondo smashed her phone in the truck and her phone's been wonky ever since. And then she said uh, her her boyfriend's trying something. She said that she can't open any apps. She said, hold tight. So Fucking Pondo. We got to give him shit for it on Thursday. Uh, yeah, Pondo's coming on on Thursday. Oh, man. So, who Pondo. So many. <laughs> God bless him. I love Pondo. That's Mad Dad. We call him Mad Dad Pondo instead of Mad Man. Like all the girls from Girl Fights. <laughs> so, Pondo. yeah, I like He's some stories. We went to, uh, we got to go to, um, what was the name of that fucking, it's another South Park bar, or another South Park uh, restaurant, Social, uh, uh, Casa Bonita, Casa Bonita. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. And we all went there, like, we did a girl fight show in Colorado, and we all went there for dinner, and it was like, uh, me, him, and Aja Pereira, who's now Aja Smith, the referee, but she was wrestling. Uh, <laughs> we were wrestling on the show, and like we went to go to this restaurant, and we had an Uber pick up, pick us up, and like there was multiple Ubers, but me, Pondo, and Aja ended up in the same one. And this driver's like, "Oh, you know what? What brings you? What brings you to this side of town?" <laughs> Pondo's like, "Well, I called up Craigslist and I asked for one of each, and this is what they sent over." <laughs> you know, I just uh, it. it... <laughs> And, and Asha was just like, and I'm like, yeah, they, he was looking for a, a brunette and a redhead, but all they had was all they had was the the brunette and the blonde, so he got screwed. <laughs> and then the Uber driver just like couldn't believe what the fuck he was hearing. So I just picked up in preparation for a uh, Pondo's book, and I know I'm like four years late, but uh, I don't read. I, I you know I don't read a lot of books. So I just I I, I, think I, reading, I think reading makes you go blind, right? That's a personal thing, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I've, think that's how it works. <laughs> that's what I tell but... myself, okay? That's just what I tell myself. And, uh, <laughs> I've read maybe like 10 books total my entire life. And uh, 
Um, but I just picked it up. And all I kept reading in it was like all the jokes and and practical jokes and stuff that like Pando, Pando plays on people. Like it, the oh. entire like first part of the book is just him pranking people. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> and like I'm it just was... so like it just I don't know like it's funny, but it also just adds to like the most like I don't know it just adds like this mystique of like he is terrifying in every aspect. Like he can prank you. Uh, he the man carries a baseball bat with a small blade on it. Like. <laughs> There's points where like you you're in you know you're at a hotel with them or whatever and you're like you go to the front desk and you you have to go through all of his aliases <laughs> like can you please can you please let not give this this particular person a key to my room <laughs> because he will take all of my shit and hide it somewhere or he'll put like fucking like he he's just he's so ridiculous like don't allow him. <laughs> anywhere near your stuff uh don't give him a chance to be alone to, to even plot against you that's the thing <laughs> like, like it, always make sure you're in you're in on the plan it's all it, it, this is all else. like self-admitted in his book like it's just yeah. crazy <laughs> no he, he like you don't care he'll tell you straight up everybody like i took a picture um when i won the awr women's title i took a picture with a pondo picture <laughs> <laughs> one eye like yeah that's the pondo <laughs> that's the pose though right yeah. and so like every like they posted it and every online's like oh you're stealing pondo shit da, 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 da. if you look in the picture you can see like right at the bottom you can see pondo's gauntlet he's literally sitting fucking behind me <laughs> as i do it like i'm not stealing shit <laughs> that was my tribute you sons of bitches fucking pondo yeah, I'm like, so last week in per, to to get ready because Dave and I were talking and we we're like, okay, we should probably after Chuck, we should probably plan uh, some more <laughs> shows out, right? And uh, he That's reached really out. Do planning he, now. He reached out to to Mickey and Bondo, and they got back to him. I reached out to Akira and Hoodfoot and got ghosted. So, <laughs> so let me tell you, on Hoodfoot then, because he's fucking my kid and he lives across the street from me. Uh, his what? phone. Is it, what? <laughs> like, like huh? legitimately? No, no. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, I was like, yo, this, this has like a crazy block. Yeah. He, wow. Uh, he, uh, we took. I took him under my wing when we first met a few years ago because he had some shitty training and stuff like that, you know. And so, like, went through and he retrained and he did all of the bullshit, like the hard shit it wasn't like the the easy training that most of these kids are getting where they don't even do cardio drills or anything like for you know 300 pound hood foot was doing backwards bear crawls suicide style at a gym you know so like he earned his shit everything he does but i digress he fucked up his phone like the top of the screen like up here in the corner oh it's uh it's got a big huge crack and like his screen's dead so like oh, wow. certain certain parts of the screen he can touch it all day long and it ain't doing shit. Wow. Like so he can't, yeah, he can't like he can't type back, he can't do that shit on his phone right now. He's waiting for because he's got one of those iPhones. Dummy. Whoa. IPhone. He's waiting Whoa. for the replacement. Well, you Whoa. see, yeah. like, I have an Android and my my replacement costs like my insurance is only like 50 bones. Yeah, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, I got to give up a kidney any time if, if something goes wrong on my phone. It's yeah. See what I'm saying? So he's got the iPhone. He's got to give up a kidney and a liver, and you know he's already done sacrifice that to the death man world already. So like, he's kind of he's in it's in between a rock and a hard place right now with the phone. <laughs> Understood. Yeah, I get it now. yeah. That's what I was like. I reached out to the actually I reached out to more people, and like nobody got back. And to I don't me. know. I don't know Nissan Acura's uh, deal. <laughs> <laughs> that one I don't know. I've called him Nissan Acura since I first met him. I'm sure we'll cross paths. I, we weren't. We're not tripping about it. It was just like, it was just like, all right, let's you know, let's shoot out here some messages and uh, see what comes if back. You could get a Satu. If you could get a Satu on your show, that's a good one too. Like he's got Sa pretty, Satu's committed. Pretty, yeah, Satu committed. We just haven't had him to, yeah. to be on. And Randy, since we talked to you last, so we we had Briar on. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Briar episode, it's going to be out this Friday. It is so bizarre. Like, 
Okay, so he was supposed to come so on. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> he he didn't show up when he he said he was going to. So we we kept saying, well, it, it's fine. It's not going to make us hate horror slam. We're not going to hate Briar. We're not. You know, we started talking about Briar memories and whatnot. We were in the middle of a story, and all of a sudden, my phone rings, and I and I grab it, and I was like, "It's Briar on the phone right now," and. <laughs> He ended up, we ended up figuring out how to get him on the camera while he's on the phone with us. So, like 20 he minutes ago, so he goes up. What? He misunderstood the direction. I mean, he, thought it, it, he thought it was 99 again. He called the 800 line. He didn't know. <laughs> it was so bizarre, man. It was, it was like, it started off just like us. All right, whatever. We're just, we're here. We're going to record something to have something. Um, and we're just talking, and then his phone rings, and it's just like you hear Rachel, like on speakerphone, and they're trying to figure it out. Dave is, you know, tech support, and I'm just sitting here like Francis is like looking at. He's like, "This is so fucking weird. Oh my <laughs> god, I can't believe this." He's like, "What the fuck is happening right now?" And then like <laughs> the the camera comes on, and then they're like, "Oh, hold on, Briar wants to fix his hair real quick." So we're just like, "Okay, it's in there chilling." I oh, you it. guys are lucky too because he's got the shaved head as a the lately. Like when I first met him twenty years ago, he had all those curly fucking locks. Oh, I I called him out on it immediately, and it's on the sound bite too. You brought up, you're like, oh, those pretty blonde locks, and he was like, Bleh. starts cracking up. Yeah, it's like so. Briar Briar lived with me and my ex for many moons, many many moons when uh. I think it was like 2003 to probably, God, it had to be about 2006. Is this in Michigan? Yeah. Yeah, okay. over at the park. And then um, when me and my ex moved from there, we moved. And then when once me and my ex split up, uh, I went through a whole, I went through a bit living in a van. I went through living in fucking different places, stuff like that. But when I finally got like, I got a trailer in Redford, uh, Michigan. He needed a place to stay again, and like it was this was 2011, I want to say, because that's when I had my uh, colon surgery, and Briar was there for the two weeks after I had my surgery that I couldn't like get up and walk and do stuff because I had four inches of my colon removed. Um, so he was there, and like he lived with me for a while. Then to um, him and his then girlfriend, wife, whatever she was, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, he would get up, like, if I had to take a piss or a shit, he would walk me to the bathroom, fucking sit me on the toilet, hold my head up, let me use the bathroom, and then fucking put me back in bed. Like, they t they sent me home on, um, uh, it wasn't fentanyl, it was um, Dilaudid. I was just going to say, it's no, Dilaudid. Fentanyl. They, sent me, they, they sent me home on the fentanyl patch, which is a three-day patch. So I'm like this for three days. Oh. <laughs> like literally couldn't hold my own fucking head up. And then they gave me Dilatin for pain after that. My after dad that. was on Dilatin for when he had his surgery. And uh, man, it's fucked seeing somebody like that. Yeah. And like, I don't take pills. Yeah. Like I've never, I've never taken them. So like when they put me on them, it's just like, I have to take them because I'm in so much pain, but it was like, fuck man, they hit me hard. <laughs> they hit me so hard. It's like I feel like a fucking heroin addict right now. Jesus Christ. So Randy, you're uh you're cannabis friendly? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> For years. <laughs> For years. Um <laughs> do you so do you smoke? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> do do you take edibles? So silly. I do all of that. Okay. Yes. You vape and all that shit yes. too? Any way to consume it, it's it's there. Yes. Fuck yeah. The tinctures. I'll take the little the THC pills. I don't care. Um. So I I worked in the Beautiful cannabis medicine. industry in Detroit. Um. And I I uh, did the the photography for a dispensary dispensary. That was my job taking weed photos. Oh, awesome. It's uh, making beautiful beautiful flowers look even more pretty. It's ridiculous that I even got paid for it. You know what I mean? Like my <laughs> whole day was like just you know big monstrous bags of weed. You know what I mean? But um. I got to learn the medical side of it too. Have you ever used the THC lotion? Huh, yeah. Do you like it? Right now, like, I, I I love right now. I'm I'm a big fan of Darren McCarty CBD roll on. Big fan of that. Like it's oh, life in a bottle. Holy shit! 
it is life in a bottle to me. Like, yeah, I'm gonna show you. It is amazing. I have not tried it yet. You really would recommend it? Oh yeah, absolutely. I've I've handed out bottles of this to wrestlers. Like, oh man, I hurt so bad. Here, take this. And they put it on, and it's like 20 minutes later, like, oh my god. I'm like, yeah, I know, right? Fucking life in a bottle. I always so, tell everybody because they say I I took CBD and it didn't do anything for me. And I say, well, but you have to smoke the THC because it activates the CBD. And yeah. Um, but it, you would already know that being a a, a THC user. Kind of sewer of of sorts. Yes. Um, have you ever tried the transdermal patches? I haven't yet. I see them in the stores all the time and like I look at them, I'm like, man, I'm sure it's probably awesome way to to administer it, but I can take that money I would spend on that transdermal patch and buy me some flour. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a big fan of flour. Oh uh, man, good to know, because we're yeah. gonna be crossing paths yeah. soon. So He's a dab guy all day long. Like he loves the fucking all the concentrates and everything. And me, like I'm old school, man. I'm old school. Like my favorite is sour diesel, the oh the OG strain, not this oh, new so bullshit. You're a sativa person, huh? Oh yeah, big time. Oh, really? Yeah. I, yeah, I love I love anything anything up. Okay, wow. Uh, it makes my it up, uh, uh, makes uh, my heart uh, feel weird every once in a while. Like uh, the um, was it the green crack? I was yeah. stuck in that for a minute, and one day I woke up and I was just like, I feel like I'm gonna have a heart attack. You know? They have um, Darren. Darren actually has uh, a strain of flour. It's only eight percent THC, but it's one of those ones that you take it. Uh, it's called Miss Elizabeth the strain. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. And it's really it actually helps you. Like you take it in the morning time, or you smoke it in the morning time, uh, and it helps with your anxiety and your depression. Oh. It's literally that's what what he markets is for, you know. So uh, there's that one, and then he has a main event, which is like twenty eight point something percent. It's ridiculous. God damn, really? <laughs> so he gave me a he gave me some of each of those one time, and like I did the mix, you know. So like, whoo! Let me tell you, I felt fantastic and high. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't just high. It was I felt great, like mentally wow. and everything. This is we fantastic. Should, we should probably try to get Darren to talk to us. I think I'm I'm yeah. so intrigued by everything about him. I don't even watch hockey. Like, He's just living his, his best story. life, and I want to talk to him about it. The story that he has, as far like his recovery story, is amazing. Like him and I sat. Um, I had put up that post a, a few months ago about you know suffering from my depression bouts and stuff like that. And like the next time I seen him, him and I sat for like 45 minutes just discussing anxiety and depression. You know, and how how the different ways to cope with it and stuff like that. Like, he's had such a good, such an amazing recovery story because he was he was an alcoholic. You know, when he when he played hockey and stuff like that, he was real bad. And he used uh he used marijuana and THC and CBD to get to get through all of that when he was going through his uh, rehab and recovery. Yeah, I'm fascinated by everything by him. Like I said, I've never. I don't watch hockey. Uh, I just see him around at every show now, and I hear hearing this now. I'm just like, dude, this dude is living his second best life right now, and I just oh, like. As far as his second act is going, man, he's like <laughs> rocking and rolling. God damn! I wish my second act was that dope. And he comes in and like he gives he gives the boys and girls the the CBD roll on. There it is. I, I want to try that. Like I have a I have a I have a back injury from fuck. What's it been like ten years? Okay, like. And and Dave's uh, you know been very helpful with getting me like ointments and stuff like that, and um, I, I feel like I got to get some of that just to, just have on hand. It's it like hit him up. It's so good. Like I love it. And like also like it, besides like especially with being a deathmatch wrestler, like we hurt our muscles, but we have these open cuts and stuff too. You know, oh so, yeah. Like, it doesn't. It's not one of those like creams or or lotions to where it has a perfume or a dye in it. So like if you get it in one of your cuts, like you're putting on your back and you accidentally hit a cut, it doesn't burn. It's not going to get it infected, you know, because oh, it's, okay. it's these chemicals that like are natural. Like there's not, it's amazing. I can't, where's, oh, here. Yeah, I can't tote how much I love this shit enough. Let's see. It says organic cold pressed apricot kernel oil, cold pressed golden jojoba oil. CBD distillate and organic hemp. It's all the good it's stuff. Yeah, it smells good too, right? 
uh, vanilla bean, patchouli oil, and lavender oils for the smells, I imagine. But it smells fantastic. It's not like one of those icy hots or anything. Like, you can go out and be a normal person and not feel like you're 90 years old walking around with icy hot on. No, I got it. Like he offers that to, to us wrestlers because as an athlete before, like he always had the knee injuries and like, you know, the different stuff. He's a fighter. Whether he played hockey or not, motherfucker's a fighter. Right. <laughs> That's what I'm like. I'm going to his website uh, now. I'm trying to find some information on it because like I, I, I am down to try anything for my back. Like I said, it's absolutely amazing. I love it. I'm actually I'm trying to get some of my my, fr- my friends that have like massage uh they're like massage therapists or certified fucking massages, whatever they call it. I'm trying to get them to try and introduce some of it into their massage work also. Randy, quick quick question. You okay, you said you're in Indiana now, right? Yeah. Uh how how is Indiana for the laws? Oh, very illegal. Oh, is it really? <laughs> oh, very illegal. Unbelievable. So- <laughs> what fucking year is this? Yeah, Indiana is going to be one of the last states to come legal um, because they're still run by a lot of the older generation. Okay. Yeah, and marijuana is yeah. a gateway drug, so you start smoking marijuana, yeah. next thing you know, it's fucking crack and heroin, right? Yeah, exactly. Which I there, might be, there might be a microcosm of fucking truth to that, but... Like, the county that we live in, they just did... Um, like the police can arrest you and put your ass in jail and stuff for possession. But once it comes to court, the prosecutor of Marion County, the county I live in, has decided hey, he's not going to prosecute you. Like there's too many, it's too overcrowded over some bullshit marijuana cases instead of, you know, like we have other situations in the city, like uh, robbery and heroin yeah. and meth. And you know, bit. murder and stuff like that, and there's not enough space for those people because he's putting all these. He's like, so if it's under, if it's under a certain amount, you literally the cops can harass you, you can spend the night in jail. But once it goes to court, he's just gonna dismiss it anyways. It what about be, as far as uh, sorry to cut you off? No. What about as far as like seizure goes? Like, can they like seize your car? Oh, and then you... take all your shit. So, so it's this is a money time, hustle, then, right? This one time at band camp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this one time we were coming back from um, uh, Bongathon, and we had like we had a, a brand new glass uh, hammer piece that it was literally just a, a glass art piece of art we were gonna put on our shelf. It said Colorado, Colorado on it. It was beautiful. We got pulled over. Uh, they searched their car. They found three grams of um, concentrates, three different like one gram jars. Uh oh. And they found. Uh, the the hammer, a banger, and something else. Uh, and so they pulled us all out of the car. And this is so Indiana. This is another indication of Indiana. The cop, the cop, uh, pulled out the driver first, asked him about the the stuff, pulled me or uh, pulled Hoodfoot out. So he pulls. Uh, it was Nick Moss was driving. Pulls Nick yeah. out, asks him questions, tells him to go sit down on the side there by the ditch. Pulls Hoodfoot out of the car and he immediately, immediately handcuffs him. And immediately. Sits him on the co- on the, the same spot over by Nick with the handcuffs on. Nick's, Nick don't have no handcuffs on. Hoodfoot does. Pulls me out of the car, asks me questions about it. Sets me on the fucking side. No handcuffs. Pull Schwartzy out, ask him about it, puts him on the side, no handcuffs. Indiana is a fucking piece of shit state. <laughs> wow, man. Yeah. They went through, the cop put us into the car individually. After he pulled us out and put us over on the side, he puts us into his car in front of the camera and stuff. And he said, um, you know, whose who's, uh, weed is this or whose marijuana is this? I said, it's all of ours. We went on it together. Right. So what is this, like 30 grams? I said, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. You can clearly look at that jar right there, and it says 0.97. And right. so does the other two, too. You're not trying to charge us with 30 fucking grams. and Trying to hit you with an ounce and then distribution. Yeah. Yeah, you're out of your fucking mind. And so we went um, uh, we went to, so we went to court, and we ended up winning. We didn't, we didn't get the, you know, we didn't go on a record or anything like that. 
the judge asked actually asked me if I would do some seamstress work for his fucking robes. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. And like, so we find out we can get our glass back. We just have to have the receipt, you know, because it was unused. It's art. Like they sell them at the gas stations here. So they're legal. So it's legal if it's not used. We tried to get it back and that son of a bitch fucking broke it. Awesome. Yeah. It's so it's so crazy. Like they'll go through all that. Like it just feels like they should. It just it should be decriminalized at least. Um, so the fact that Ohio is Michigan or Ohio is medical, Michigan's legal, Illinois is is medical and recreational. But like Indiana, everything around it, us, except for Kentucky, is legal. It doesn't make so to give some context, and I know I, I've talked to David like very lightly about this, but uh, before David and I met, I uh, I was a floor manager at a head shop, right? So I, I've talked, you know, I think I mentioned this to David before, um, and this was at the the, the cusp of Michigan um, legalizing it even for medical. And, yeah, uh, I don't, um, you know, just recently like I'll partake, like I eat, I don't really smoke a lot, like I'll eat the edibles and stuff, and. Uh, but at the time, I just didn't do it. Um, but I was a giant advocate for it because I could see the medicinal reasons behind it. The and, major benefits. Oh, yeah, 100%. And um, I remember uh, at the head shop when I when it first became legal for medical, uh, I worked with an older lady that was like an old hippie lady. I still love her. her. name was Jen. Shout out to Jen if she ever sees this or hears this. Um, and when it became legal, she like started crying. Right. Because she thought she would never li be able to live to see it be legalized. Yeah. And then um, we started getting med patients in coming in and like the stories that these people had lived with. Right. For so long and not being able to do it. Right. And I remember seeing the first medical card ID issued in Michigan. Like the guy came in, it didn't have a photo on it, nothing. And he uh, he lived he was living with some kind of spinal injury that was like almost crippling the entire time. And he's like. He walked in and he was just like, yo, this is amazing. Um, and just hearing a lot of those stories, I was like, yo, it's such bullshit that it's the way it is in a lot of states still. Um, Friend, and, what's up? If you, for, you, I mean, I, I know that you don't smoke like in the way that like, you know, like buying weed, mm -hmm. but before they had like the, the dispensaries, you know, going to somebody's house, Sitting on the couch for fucking thirty minutes and listening to all, like the bullshit and you know what I mean, and then getting meeting the at the fucking store, meeting at the gas station on the corner because your dude fucking is in a hurry. <laughs> getting a bag from somebody and having them hold it and be like, uh, and just basically deep throat it, and then they hand it to you and you're just like, oh, what the fuck? And you don't even know what it is. You know what I mean? What is it? Does it go so? Randy, I, I used to, have, I still do have terrible insomnia, which is one of the reasons why I use it. I just, you know, maybe it's the amount of caffeine, you know, but my insomnia is bonkers, you know? Um, so I was buying weed from somebody before I um, got my cars and I come to find out that they were selling me sativa. And that's why I was having a really extra hard time to, you know, when I, yeah. Mickey, when I finally Mickey, got some Mickey. indica, I was like, Mickey smokes and she uh she can't do anything any strains that are citrus related because she's allergic. She gets like migraines and like it's really bad. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. The citrus yeah, notes we... in there set off her allergies? Wow. Yeah. Or her um wow. It gives her migraines, like awful migraines. You said about sleeping, about insomnia, and like yeah. I know I'm part of not Barry McCarty's brand, but I'm fucking huge ambassador. I love this shit. Uh, I use everything that he has. He also has this. CBDN. CBN. Okay. I am Man. in the know of that. So they are 2 milligrams of CB, CBN and 10 milligrams of THC per per uh, gummy. I take two of them before I go to bed and I am out. Really? And, yeah. Like his products are so good. It's well, unbelievable. Let me ask you this. Awesome. He has this, which is, I think is fantastic. Most people don't do it. Each one of his gummies in the pack itself are individually wrapped. Oh, to keep from um, like more of the milligrams spreading to the other one. I actually yeah, had a so also the freshness, and then if I if I want to go, I just want to take this in my pocket, so I can okay. take it for later. 
Boom, I can put it in my pocket instead of like having this sugary mess all in. I got to find a plastic baggie to put it in or, you know, put it like somewhere to where it's not going to. All of his products, like he has so many of them. I have like, I literally have a shelf. Brown, so, like, yeah, because I fucking love it. There's this one, which is just CBD. That's my CBN. And then the THC gummies, these. Woo, Ooh, those will wow. get you. Yeah, I'm a big fan of, of Darren McCarty and all of his um, his marijuana products. Francis, I think I told you about this. I, I had some gummies that I got, and they they all kind of melted together into like one big lump. Yeah. So I took yeah. one that was a 10 milligram, but it turned out to be like a 50 milligram, and I had a fucking shitty night. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, I, yeah. I had to tell my wife, just I was like, tell me I'm okay. And she's like, you're fine. You're fine. And I was like, I know, but I need to one way. Okay. <laughs> She's it's like, like you feel fine. relaxed, not like. Oh. I told I th I've told you, David, the, the time I blacked out in Vegas from like I I had like a three hundred milligram brownie that there was, someone was like, "Don't eat all of it," and I was like, "I'm not a bitch," and I ate yeah. all of it, and Bro, I blacked out. <laughs> you fucked up so bad, dude. And I chased it with like a five hour energy of like THC that was like another fifty milligrams. That's Bro, what are you doing to yourself? I I, I legit blacked out for. I lost maybe have like you, three did hours. Did you see that? Um, I can't remember what the name of his products are. Josh Harper. You guys know Josh Harper? Uh, no, I think he, you do. Uh, it's like Harpo so, or Harper something or another. Treats or ice cream or something. He makes ice cream. He's a wrestling fan out of Michigan. And he makes uh, ice cream. But he also does infused ice cream. Holy shit. So he has made, yeah. He has made a, um, I believe it was chocolate and caramel um, with caramel chunks in it, uh, uh, ice cream for Schwartzy. It's called like Dabbin or something like that, Dabbin Daddy or something like that, the flavor. God. And it, it has in like just a little itty bitty, little pint deal, just a little one, 450 milligrams of THC. Come on. <laughs> it is the... It is the the one ice cream that he infuses that, and it has the most THC in it. And I'm like, I, yeah, it's that. You Dab and Dad. Um, you know what that would fucking do to me? Because like, I can't I, even I'm, imagine. I can't do a lot it's of dairy. So good. I can't, do, I can't do a lot of dairy. So, but like, I love ice cream. So I would like polish that off and just probably like just have the worst night imaginable. <laughs> it tastes so good to the point where I'm like. I have to stop eating this or I'm going to be on the fucking floor. But it's so good. I don't want to stop. <laughs> like, it tasted so good. Oh. I, 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 I wouldn't want to do that to my wife. You know, Melissa, can you imagine <laughs> if, like, Melissa sees me eating a tub of ice cream? She's going to be like, you're going to be shitting all night. And then she finds yeah. out there's weed in it. <laughs> <laughs> you passed out shit. <laughs> you wake yeah. up in the morning in a puddle of shit. I mean, you know, like, it could be worse, dude. It was a hell of a night. <laughs> Um, so guys, I'm going to try one more time, but Randy, I don't want to occupy all your time tonight and stuff. Um, You're fine, man. I, uh, I slept all day cause I might've, might've taken a little, uh, psychedelic adventure, you know, last night. So, <laughs> nice. so I was, I was asleep all day. So I'm up again, you know, cool. I'm, I need to clear the mind and reset. Uh, Randy, I, I gotta ask for, I know I always say no spoilers. But Francis, did you see that uh, that Harpo show that we're going to? Did you say that, that Schlack was added to it? That you're going to, and that I'm, I'm going to, yes. not you. Why are you going, Francis? It's my wife's birthday that weekend. Mm -hmm. So take her for her birthday. She'd love it. Has so, she ever seen me wrestle? She'd love it. So my wife is going with me, and we got front row tickets, and it's going to be my first time seeing Masada live. Oh man, you're gonna um, love it. So they just announced Schlack, and whenever I watch Deathmatch stuff, my wife watches too, and she, she sees Schlack, and she's like, oh, my God, Schlack is going to be there. But I was going to ask, I know you haven't been announced yet, but are you going to be there? I'm Rust Belt champion. Of course I'm going to be there. Fuck yeah! Fuck, Fuck all these yeah! I was, I was, you brought up Schlack, and like Schlack is one of those dudes where like he's the scariest-looking motherfucker like, you'll ever see. He but so he was, he was he was one of the people I uh, like, I'm trained I'm EMT I'm trained EMT and I I I know CPR and I do I do tattoos and I'm a wonderful fucking human being and so it's like 
he was one of the people I reached out to, and I did it. And after I did it, I was like, "Fuck, he's gonna kill me!" Like, <laughs> like I, I, the message like was like, "Hey, sir!" Like I, I was very proper because I was like, "I don't want him to beat my ass," um, <laughs> but he didn't see it anyways. So, <laughs> are you familiar with his music, Randy? With who? Schlack? Yeah. Oh do yeah. You know, do you know Crack House? I've heard it. Yes. Uh, one night Francis and I were just talking, you know, through text and he's like, check this out. And it's like, <laughs> holy shit. I mean, it's what I, what I expected. You know what I mean? Have um, you seen the, the different music videos he's in and stuff like that too? Oh yeah. He does like a, yeah. The butcher gimmick and stuff like that in it. Yeah. So good. Uh, I was in a music video once, whatever. Whatever. You were? Yeah, I was actually. <laughs> a couple what, which, years ago. Um, the song it? is called, uh, Caroline by Georgia Pines. It's on YouTube. But yeah, you can pull it up. I am going to. But yeah, I was in that. And then me and Thunder Kitty actually were in a movie. Um, Like the year after, we uh, we wrestled each other in a movie in Chicago in an independent film that won a bunch of awards at the film festivals, actually. It's I called Signature that. Move. Yeah, it's called Signature Move, and that's on Prime Video also. I'm going to fucking check that out. Hold on a minute. I'm going to make a note, too. I'm trying to think of who all of there was. Like, there was a couple, a couple different girls in there. Um, that was so, like, that was, that was one of those. We got to do, like, a red carpet for that movie. So that was cool. You know, we got to go to Chicago and dress up. And, uh, uh, and that was really awesome. How cool is that? But the music video, it was shot right here, like a mile from my house. Um, we, we're right by IUPUI, uh, Indy, Indy University, Indiana University. Okay. And they have all of their like art students and their their theater students and stuff like that. So I had one of the one of the guys around here that knew what was going on. He said, "Hey, you want to be part of this this music video? Uh, you'll be wrestling this broad who doesn't know how to wrestle." So we'll have to have you come in like two days before, teach her how to take a clothesline, teach her how to fucking run the rope. So I basically crashed course this broad in training in about eight hours on how to be a wrestler for this video that lasts maybe three minutes. Wow. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun and uh, shout out to Gracie because she really, she really did some work, man. And like she put in work that to, to get just the little clips of the video that we did do. And it was awesome, like cheerleader type. Okay. She, she was a cheerleader type. So I literally like, as I'm trying to like teach her how to land on a clothesline, <laughs> like, so I don't actually kill her, you know, like yeah, for real. Right. Uh, I told her, I said, just, just fucking throw yourself back. Like, you know, you're falling from the top of a pyramid and they're going to catch you. Okay. Like, that's literally how I had to break it down, like, as in cheerleader fucking, which is very strange to me because I'm, you know, I was only a cheerleader for two weeks long enough to get the splits down, and then I was out. I learned how to do the splits, realized I'm not that girly, and I was out. <laughs> <laughs> like, let me go, let me go play basketball or volleyball or softball or something where I can hit people. Yeah, so you, you. When we were talking about you playing sports, you know, you didn't mention that you tried cheer out for a minute. Mm. Also, cross country. Okay. I tried cross country out, but then, like, I think it was probably about two weeks into that too. Like, we'd get up every morning, like it's like four o'clock in the fucking morning, and go and run before we went to school and shit. And it's like, I smoke cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> what in the fuck am I doing running five miles? Like. I get like half a mile in. I'm like, let me just stop and hit this cigarette right quick. <laughs> you, were, you were a smoker back in high school? <laughs> oh, yeah. I've and smoked cigarettes since I was 10 years old. And you, while you were training, you were a smoker too? Yeah. yeah. How the fuck do you do cardio when you're a smoker? Uh, Very carefully and not very comfortably. <laughs> <laughs> That's not just like, I'm sitting here and... I can't even walk. I think I've mentioned this in like a few episodes already. I can't walk through a wrestling ring without getting winded. And <laughs> I don't smoke. I'm just overweight. And I'm like, yo, I watch some of these bigger people. And then like you, like you said, you smoke. 
do it. And I'm like, yo, I'm going to have an asthma attack watching this. <laughs> like I've, I've smoked, I've smoked uh, when I first, when I was 10, I used to steal cigarettes from my grandma and she smoked non-filtered pal males. Oh man. Yeah. So I started off right there at the top of why is this happening to me? And then slowly I would, I would steal the cigarettes from my aunt and uncle who had like marble menthols and Newports where they had filters on them and stuff. And then eventually I think I was like 15. My grandma's like, would you stop fucking stealing everybody's cigarettes and I'll just buy you a pack. I'm like sounds good to me. Um, when I first met Francis, I, I was a passionate cigarette smoker and it took me a, a couple tries to be able to quit. And I'll, yeah. I'll tell you what, like I, I quit smoking cigarettes and it was tough. You know what I mean? Like, and I fucking gained like so much weight from doing it and stuff, mm -hmm. but then I, I got over it. You know, um, I quit doing like fucking like Coke and crack and <laughs> all kinds of bad shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know what? I can't quit. I, oh, can't, yeah, I'm I can't quit drinking pop. I'm like, the worst. That's, you know, quitting cigarettes was like one of the worst things in the world for me because I just didn't want to do it. Like, I, I cried too. over it. You know what I mean? Holy yeah, God. see, you get it. <laughs> it's like, a champion. like, I get it. If I can't drink pop, why the fuck even be alive? I can't do what I fucking want to. Like, I'm fucking done with this shit, you know? So I was like, I, I was a, a, a raging alcoholic for many, many years. Um, and when me and me and Schwartz met, we, uh, we made a pact, you know, and like, I haven't drank, uh, it's, it's going on 10 years now, but no shit, really? That's what's yeah. Funny. Yeah. I'm impressed. Sober for 10 years. And like, wow. I wasn't like, uh, Oh, uh, you know, I just drink. No, I was a raging alcoholic. Like I would drink a fifth of tequila by myself, go get another one and then wake up the next morning on somebody's lawn because I decided to walk home from the bar instead of drive. Fuck. Yeah, like really bad. And like I quit cold turkey. And that was like of all the things like I I quit cocaine. I, you know, yeah. started up, quit it, started up, quit it, started up again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's so good though. That's the problem with so it. Good. Like I don't I don't like the way that cocaine I don't like cocaine. I just like the way it smells. I, see, I, I did cocaine once for about 10 years, so I yeah. totally get it. <laughs> you know, the, the, the funny thing I, I tried telling my, I don't give a fuck if this is in the podcast, you know what I mean? But um, I, everyone's Everybody in a while, has a past. What was that? Everybody has a past that makes them who they are now, you know? So like, I don't mind talking about, well, you know, the shit I did back then because it's literally made me who I am. Like, so if I, if I omit that I had a, a drug problem or I omit that I was an alcoholic, people are like, well, how the fuck is she? Is she just working us? You know, how the fuck does she, is she a survivor? And really right. everything in life. Like I, I haven't touched it in a, a very, 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 very long time, but every once in a while we'll be out like going for a walk late at night and I'll smell something that's like a combination of like rain on grass and like dryer sheets, but it'll remind me of the way, cocaine smells and i'll be like, <sighs> and like, it's like thinking of like a fond memory you know what i mean and then i'm like no i hate it i don't ever want that again you know what i mean i snap out of it but you know yeah i didn't have a problem with cocaine that was a problem <laughs> wow she's got jokes look at that yeah i love oh, it I, well, I after, like, once you go through the recovery process you know and like it, it's almost like you have to to kind of to cope with the the stupid shit that you did, you know. Like I did some really stupid shit, <laughs> right. so I have to joke about it now to understand, you know. Like that was just part of what I was going through at that particular point in my life, you know. And it led me all that was it that path. Like it might have strayed a couple times on on the the alcohol road or the the Coke road or, you know, the different drugs, whatever, but it always ended up back on that wrestling road. You know, uh, Francis, you and I, we talked about this kind of recently, but I, I was going off. Like, I just can't believe how nice you are in like person. You know what I mean? Like just, yeah, yeah. well, I mean, and, and also like from the, the death match people that we've met, like, I mean, we, cause we see you guys as fans, you know, 
yeah. like spilling blood and, you know, just very, it, it's aggressive, you know, and to see, yeah. to hear like talk about like, you know, overcoming like, you know, substance abuse and dealing with mental illness and, you know, and also just, you know, like side hobbies and stuff. It's just not what I would have expected it, from, it's, it's from somebody in this type of industry. It, well, doing it's this in art, general, art because like you said, we're, we're looking at it as fans and yeah. I think we, we suspend everything that we know about people. Right. But at the end of the day, it's like, they're just people, but like, we're looking at it as fans. And for us, you guys are larger than life, right? Everything you guys do, everything is like massive on a scale, even, you know, and not even just like massive in the sense of like big production value, WWE stuff. It's just like, you guys are doing cool shit. We're fans. We're blown away. It's, and then just to hear that stuff, I totally understand what David's saying. It's like, we kind of just like lose, lose sight. That's just like, nah, you guys just, you know, you go home, enjoy Coca-Cola and, and just, you know, you deal Coca-Cola. with real shit. I'm shocked. I'm shocked I'm not sponsored by Coca-Cola yet. I've drank so much over the years. Like, deal with real shit like broken phones and like, I don't know, it's just. Well, it's it's that like that uh, celebrity lens. Like, we're you know, I'm not saying I'm a celebrity, but like as far as like, you know, the wrestling fans and, and people that come to watch us, like they put that that celebrity lens on to where like. You know, even though I know it's Robert Downey Jr., he's fucking Iron Man. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know and, what I'm saying? So like, 100%. It's that's... like, you guys, you guys know I'm fucking Randy West, you know, but I also have my normal life to where, like, when it's... I'm not in front of you guys, like, I, ha- I go and donate plasma and, like, my car breaks down and my phone that's... shit. <laughs> that's, the, that's the crazy part because, like, you know, at at my current job and a little my last job, like we are, we deal with my job with like the current culture, like the current, like mainstream culture. So like hip hop and the celebrities and the athletes and stuff like that. And I'm just unfazed by so much of that. Right. Like I've, I've had like Kanye West show up at my job and I was just like, all right, it's Kanye. And like, everyone's freaking out. Right. (laughs) Um, I spent, I went, I was down, I went down to Cleveland for all-star games and basketball players are just showing up i'm just like i don't know who any of these people are but you know <laughs> but like i show up at like a vfw hall in maybe michigan and and neil diamond cutter is smoking a cigarette on the ramp walking in and i'm like holy shit yeah cool. right <laughs> yeah yeah like, randy we we walked in and we were just like we both looked at each other we're just like is that neil, neil diamond cutter just fucking chilling <laughs> hanging out in the snow like like, I, I mean, it, it was wild. Was, you know what I mean? was it Neil Diamond Cutter? Or was it one of those little garden gnomes? Because they get mixed up a lot. <laughs> uh, true. Did we? So, since we had you on, did we tell you that we had Neil on the week after you? Uh, he told me. Um, <laughs> he said, first question out of their mouth. Heard you were a trucker. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yes. yes. He's like, all I could think to myself was, God damn it, Randy. <laughs> His episode was hilarious. But he's, it, 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 he's one of the reasons he's my social media bestie, man. Like, uh, I, I enjoy Neil. He's a good dude. Pain in the ass, but good dude. Yeah, well, I mean, but that, that, that again, kind of goes to underline what, I, what we were saying is just, you know, like, we're, we're used to seeing blood and guts and, and violence yeah. and stuff. And then when we, we talk to you guys... And you're like super down to earth and humble and express the, the, you know, humanity, you know, like, I mean, you, you guys, like you were saying, you know, like you have, you still have shit happen in real life. You know what I mean? Um, it's, yeah. just, it's wild. Really cool. Like, I, you know, I, I, I have a 20 year old daughter and a 15 year old son. And like most people, they're just like, wait, what? You have fucking kids. And it's like, yeah, you know, like I'm 40 years old. There's other things that, like, I, I don't just wrestle and go home and sit in my chair and don't do anything and then go <laughs> wrestle. Like, like, there's a whole process to this. Uh, like, People with kids are just amazing to me because I don't have any. I have, three, I have three cats, right? And I ate peanut butter and jelly sandwich for dinner the other night, right? I can't support <laughs> another person. So <laughs> I feel that, yeah. Like, like my, my daughter, she, she was raised with her dad, you know, because I was on the road and him and I had a terrible breakup and stuff like that. And then like my son, he's autistic. Um, he when for probably about the first eight years of his life, he didn't talk. 
so now he's in a, he's in a school uh, where he has like 300 plus word vocabulary. So like it's not like I don't I don't just wrestle, you know, because I I want the attention and stuff. Like I'm trying to 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 make something uh, so that my kids have something when I'm gone. Like I can't I I might not have been able to provide everything to them or you know provide anything to them for their lives but I want to go ahead and leave them something for their future you know like I wasn't able to to provide a whole lot for them for their from their past but I would like to leave something for them for their future you know so once again Randy I'm completely blown away by you know I know this is not really scheduled you know and I appreciate you so much taking time out to like Hang out with us, you know, while, but, while Mickey figured out whatever she was doing, but um, it, it's, it's I I don't know I I just I I love the impromptu like conversation and all the weird places that we've gone to like just you know we've been what, on here for an hour and we've we've covered pretty much the whole uh, the whole world of conversations. Yeah, uh, we start i that's i, I really i don't know I, i'm kind of at a loss for words at just like how where we started and where we ended at like you know uh, again learning another side of you and and again after like watching you like go nutty last weekend you know like i, I mean I've, I've been watching a whole lot of your like catalog you know what i mean so I, i've been seeing you get nuts and then i've done, I've done some things <laughs> 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 There's actually stuff on IWTV now. Like when I search my name, like matches will show up, and I'm like, I don't even remember that match. And like I have to go back and watch it because, like, it, like I don't know if I'm hitting the head too many times or if I've done too many matches. Like to where I just don't. I just there's some of them I just don't remember, and I'm like, holy shit, that was dope. <laughs> like, I, me and me and Thunder Kitty did a um a dog collar match, and like at IWA. I don't even know. It was at the Colgate gym. So I don't even know what the name of the show was, but we did this dog collar match and it was just so good. This was early on and like her and I working with each other too. So Francis, do you know about Thunder Kitty? Do you know who Thunder Kitty is? Uh, I, you, this isn't the first time uh, they got brought up. I I'm, brought up a year Kitty old lady wrestler extraordinaire. She, yeah, she's uh, like how 108 years old, right? Uh, she just turned a hundred actually. Okay, yeah. So I, I saw that she had a, a hundred her hundredth birthday show, but yeah, I mean, she, she wears like like the old trunks and fucking dude. She's like fucking awesome. Like Randy, I was telling you, you know, I, I've been following women's wrestling for so long. Like you know, like I was obsessed with Shimmer for the longest time. Okay. You know, um, but yeah, Thunder Kitty's been <laughs> on my radar for a minute. Yeah, she was. Uh, she was. She's from Gulfport, Mississippi. She moved to California and was trained by the Santino brothers and um, uh, what's the other ones that are down there? The other brothers, Ballard brothers. And then she came to Indiana and before he went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, uh, she was trained by uh, Drake Younger. Oh, okay. When she came to Indiana. So she's had... <laughs> And then her and I went and did a 12 week training course, like a refresher course when they were doing the women of honor thing. We went and did that with truth martini. So Thunder Kitty has been through like four different school wrestling school systems. It, like she, you just wrestled her like what earlier, like last week or something. I'm, I'm... Uh, this, this past Saturday at XICW. She actually, like, she hit, yeah. Yeah. The, remember the, the it was the event that was like up the street from my apartment. <laughs> oh, that was the one you were telling me about. Fuck. Okay. Fuck. And I did you go, right. Francis? I have. I, I've been working a bunch of hours. So I'm mm -hmm. just. My life is just mm -hmm. terrible right now. So. Mm -hmm. really? Yeah, it was like it was one of those just like her and I uh, like we've been married to each other like we were married to each other on the road for like two years like everywhere we went we wrestled each other. And it was like, all right, you're the bad guy. I'm the good guy, but you're the good guy. I'm the bad guy. But like, we'd, we'd switch it up and, and, you know, and then like, so now it's to the point where we don't even, we don't even have to like, we're like, all right, you're going to hit me. I'm going to hit you back. Cool. We're friends. Like, I love it. 
Like she lives 20 minutes from me. She's one of my best friends in the world. Fucking love women's wrestling. I got Mickey. Uh, so Thunder Kitty and Mickey are my two best friends in the business. Um, Mickey's birthday. <laughs> a little bit Coming of history. Off, right? Yeah, Mickey, Mickey's birthday is May 16th. Myself and Thunder Kitty's birthday is May 15th. So we all we all kind of come together like and and share our birthdays when we can, you know. So it's pretty awesome. Like I want to do a a show, a, a a birthday theme show for the three of us and have it called Golden Girls. Holy shit! <laughs> I really really want to do a three way birthday show for us. So if anybody's out there and listening, flap us, flap us. Uh, and the before we bring it on home, um, I uh, have been working my way through some flop house, and I was gonna bring up bring this up to Mickey, but I mean, obviously, you know, nothing. We weren't <laughs> able to get her on, but I watched a match last night, and it was Mickey versus Chuck versus Carver, and there was three other people that were there, but I can't remember who they are. But um, it, it was so weird and wild it was in a parking lot yes do you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah we had we had a couple few parking lot shows it was fantastic yeah it's fucking awesome but i'm just chilling watching iwtv and just looking through the catalog and i was like oh mickey versus chuck versus fucking carver let's check that out and yeah like wild you know (laughs) like what god damn I love yeah, that. I've, I've actually got um I've got Carver uh at, at the next Flap House show. It's me versus Carver on March 20th. I'm pretty excited about that for Flap House in at the Indiana City Brewing Company. Oh, okay. And uh, uh like so I keep telling everybody's like, oh man, it's fucking Carver. It's Carver. I'm like, listen, I'm the broad in the scary movies that the serial killer runs from. You know what? I'm just gonna say this, and I've said this, Dave. I am not sold on the Carver gimmick yet. So, oh, I am, man. I can't. I'm not. It's just I haven't been impressed by it. Like I've. I, and that's have just you me. seen the first, it's not, it's not the first ever Flap House show? No, I'm going to pull it up. If if right. you go to IWTV and go to the first ever Flap House show that we did, Carver versus uh, Becky. Um, I can't remember her name right now. She goes by Logan something or another now, um, but they did they did a match and like it was it we shot it cinematically and like tried okay. to really make it you know like like literally like he he says that if it wasn't for that match he probably wouldn't have the clout that he does now because we actually gave him that serial killer match you know that everybody was like oh okay, he's a serial killer, go out there and wrestle a match. We're like, no, you're a serial killer. Go out there and fucking stalk that bitch and be a serial killer. <laughs> Becky Idol. Do you, you so, know, so. Uh, Becky like, Idol. I, so I'm, I'm going to pull it up, yeah. right, because I, I I want to, right, and I've said to the Dave, I want to buy into the Carver, uh, you know, but it's just, I think I've, I've seen him live maybe once or twice, and I it was supposed to be like a third time, and something happened, and he didn't show up. So it was it was it's it's been it's been a weird relationship, and I want to well, I really want to. You're like, carving up bodies. It's hard to you know pull yourself away to wrestle. True see, that, right? <laughs> I, I'm waiting to see Cruel live. Do you know Cruel? Oh, Maybe. he's amazing. Um, I saw him at was it I I C W's uh, No Hold Bar. They did the Deathmatch Horror Story, and mm-hmm. he got. This nasty, like, cut from the glass underneath his Cause arm. Because they, they didn't use tempered glass. It was like oh, the, it was a, it was like a sheet glass, and it wasn't yeah, tempered. Yeah, like the nineteen eighty shower door glass. Yeah, and shit. Randy, it wasn't one, tempered. One second he's normal, and the next second he's fucking like pink because he's covered yeah. in blood. You know what I mean? It was that much blood that fast. It was, was that the- horrifying. Mm-hmm. Who was it? Was that the it, one he worked with Satu? Yeah, it was the one with him and Satu. Yeah, yeah, fucking. I mean, and then he he stepped back in the ring like a month later, and I was yeah. like, "How the fuck?" Like, well, dude, Francis, a- after he before he like you could see like the ambulance lights in the background, and he still mugged for photos. You know what I'm saying? I was like, that's when I got kind of sold on him because I was like, this guy's fucking nuts. You know what I mean? And, and he's like, 
six foot seven or something, six foot like he's just a fucking beast of a man. But uh, Carver, I didn't get to see because I ended up getting. I, I think I told you this. I got splattered by Justin Kyle's blood and got pissed off and went home. <laughs> Yep, that's the fast version of it. Uh, I actually had a really bad panic attack in between there and stuff and spent all night. And and I went and got an AIDS test and <laughs> all kinds of... It was fucking awful. But so, but no. I was when I was sitting outside being like, I'm going to go home. I'm fucking so pissed off. I missed Satu versus Carver in, uh, um, in the barn. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't, I didn't get to see Carver. Sucks. You know, fuck that barn. Okay, like that barn was a, a shit place for a match i'm just gonna say that right like no i this. was having fun up until uh, is that the the was it the f5 compound yeah, game yeah. So i actually i really liked the the pit in that barn just because it reminded me so much of like a blood sport or uh you know like oh, yeah i guess looking at it like that it's that just... kind of setting I'm visually stimulating, but I'm sure, you know, just being there as a fan and watching it probably sucked. It just, it was so cluttered. It was like people were like pushing up on me and I was being pushed up. I was just like, ah, it was fucking dust. And uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I sound like a bitch right now, right? But I'm just going to say it. Like, it was just, fuck that barn. All right. We got, we got stuck in the mud going up the hill, leaving there. We had to have like six wrestlers push us on different angles of the of our van to get us through and god bless crash jackson he was literally fucking covered like head to toe covered in mud because he was the one behind the van pushing i you love know, crash jackson i don't give a shit what anybody says crash jackson is, is my dude good people right dave's you know panic blood panic attack in that barn and it, it was it was a bizarre weekend, but I'm, I I fucking loved it, and I want them to do it again so badly. I'm trying to get my happy ass into that pit. I keep talking, you know, like I finally made it to the chains. Oh, Not you're, you're flipping the it. door. Yeah, so Not trying to that pit, Danny. Randy, it's a it's a it's almost a foregone conclusion that you're going to be there. You know what I mean? Like I, you're. I mean, you're... I, so I knew I knew I'd eventually get into the chains. You know, like I put it up on my goal board and. I feel like you, you manifest your own destiny, you know? So like, as long as you, you're thinking it, you know, that's what, that's what you're going to, to bring into, into your life. And so like, I kept telling myself, I'm going to get that ICW booking. And like, I would message Danny and like, just send him pictures like this of me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, it was so he didn't forget about me. Right. Like, right. You know, like you, you get lost in, in the world of Facebook and Twitter and like everything. You put up a post and it's gone because there's so many other millions of people posting right at the same time. So I wanted to make sure that I was fresh in his mind, you know, and like I, I, I'm glad that I did it because this picture. When it came out for that green green phantom couldn't make it across the border. He remembered this. You know, he remembered. Oh, yeah. So Danny is on our list of people we want to talk to, and you just gave me an idea. When he doesn't reply, I will just send him photos of me doing that. That's and... it. That's all you do. Like as long as like you're staying fresh in somebody's mind, like they're eventually going to fucking uh, uh, say, "Hey, what about?" You know, Francis, or what about when, Randy, or what about Dave? You know, like Dave, yeah. when you when you make the 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 social media like clip for that, make sure you put that in the thing, so and and, and we could tag him in it, so he knows <laughs> why it's like, happening. Um, yeah, no problem, yeah, dude. You got it. The best moments, one of the best Just, moments yeah. of my life, is definitely to look up after winning that Rust Belt, to look up and like. Like, I heard his voice, and I was like, what the fuck? Who's talking? And, like, you can see on the video, like, I'm looking around, like, who the fuck? And then, like, when I find the realization of, holy shit, it's Danny. Like, you see it on my face, and it's just like, okay. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, to, to bring it all home, Randy, I, I got to tell you, like, when you won that title, I was, you know, sitting in bed, watching my cat sitting between my legs, uh, my wife sitting next to me, I'm watching it, you know. And when you won, I fucking was like, yeah, 
yes, yes. And my cat jumped up and my wife looked, was like startled. And you know what I mean? I, I fucking, I was yeah, right there with crying. you. I was crying. I was happy. I got to have that moment with, you know, like Satu is another one of my kids that like lived with us and like went on the road with us and stuff like that. So like to have it with, to have such a special moment uh, with him in the ring and then have uh, Sean, Sean P there also as the referee, as the third person in there. Like it was just such a special moment for me um, because I'd worked so hard to get to that Rust Belt championship uh, match. And then to be able to have all those, fantastic factors and then at the end of it have danny come out and offer me a match and not just like not just any match on icw like he offered me a match against my best friend <laughs> amazing yeah like, what a, oh that's, my god that's awesome cloud nine cloud nine all day so like i I'd like all, all the people that really supported me and like really wanted to see me in that position like i thank you guys so much because I don't know, like, with me just pushing by myself to get that Rust Belt Championship match, I don't think it would have come about as quickly as it did had it not been for all my fans and my supporters going online and, and telling RPW and telling Chris, you know, like, hey, why are you so dumb? Put Randy in well, there. Like, Yeah, that, I mean, that was going to be our next move, right? We talked about it. We said, all right, well, mm-hmm. I think on the show with you, we're like, we got we to gotta get Chris on and kind of push that. Um but it happened, and I couldn't, you know, the Mickey thing has to happen, right, Dave? You got to make sure this happens. Uh, it's a bummer, right, because we have a missed opportunity it here. With, holy shit, she happen. has the belt. Oh, my God. It's so heavy. Look how beautiful that is. Randy, you're our first champion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not only are, were you our first guest on our show, you're our first fucking champion. I have my other one up there too. I've got a couple of these sons of bitches. I gotta see it before we wrap that up. I have to see it. Here's the other one. They ah, uh, come on. That's my other one. My bag got heavy. <laughs> that's that's awesome. I can't. You know what? I can't think of a better way to kind of like end this, right? Yeah. Randy, thank you so much again. I'm sorry that uh, I, I really wanted to surprise Mickey. I thought it would have been awesome. We'll figure it out. I don't know. Mick Nichols owes me. That's all. I'll take it out of her ass. <laughs> I'm here for that. So, uh, you know, we started off, you know, expecting Mickey. We ended with Randy, uh, the Rust Belt champion, the AWR women's champion. Like, oh, come on. Yeah, you got to show it one more time. Yeah. Oh, come so on. Heavy. They're so heavy. Oh, it's... look at this. The, the problems she's having. Her her championship belts are so heavy. It's yeah, disappeared. Wow. It she disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a little girl from Down River, Michigan. <laughs> That's the fucking best. All right. Well, Randy, thank you thank again, you, Randy. man, for hanging out with us tonight. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'll get on Mickle's ass and see what I can't do. Well, Let no. Us, once um, once we get it set up, you you got to come back and and we. Oh, for sure. Happen. I come on there and harass Mickles anytime. I love her. I love you. You want some stories? Put me and her on. Like, <laughs> that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> that was just. I mean, you know what I'm saying. But I, I'll make it happen. So, again. Right, so thank you, right. Randy. Is that okay. it? Of course, of course. I love you guys. Take it easy, Randy. <laughs>